let's paint a bait. Hi. Today we're just gonna uh, paint a bait. I don't know. I was bored and I have not done a video in a long time, as many people have reminded me. And uh, yeah, just let's get into it. So this is the bait. It's just the top water bait that I actually come up with the design for a few years now. I've had this design, never made but like two of them. I don't know why. I really like this design because it walks really easy. And uh, it's already white, primed, and ready to paint. Look at that mouth. Beautiful. So for the first color, see I don't exactly have a pattern that I really want to follow. <laughs> But uh, I think what I'm going to do is actually start off with some of this yellow orc, orchid, orchid? I, I don't know how you would even pronounce that color, but that's what we're going to start off with. And uh, I really don't have that bright of an idea of what I'm going to go for actually, but i got to clean the airbrush first. I almost forgot. Mm. Crusty, dirty old needle that the camera will not focus on. Right. Uh, I normally clean my brush after every paint job. I actually painted yesterday, so now I have to clean it. And all I really do is just take a rag, and I have some of this... U.S. Art Supply Airbrush Cleaner. I like to give it a little dip and take my rag again and just kind of, you know, really work it on there pretty good until I've got 99% of all dried old paint off of this needle. Sometimes you just gotta really work it off with your hands and fingernails, but uh, that's pretty much what you gotta do. Then what I like to do is just take the tip off my airbrush, which is this piece on screws, which is your guard. Then you have this tiny little nozzle here. If you can see that, that tiny little point is what actually, it's hollow and the needle goes in there. And when you pull back the trigger here, then it actually pulls back the needle and releasing paint. So the more you pull back the needle, the more paint you release. Pretty cool concept of how this thing actually works. And most of the airbrushes come with this tiny little wrench here that I have up there and uh just so barely unscrew it like that and then unscrew the rest by hand very tiny so be very careful not to lose it and then what i like to do is i really recommend if you're into airbrushing buy one of these on amazon it's this little pokey thing but it's if you can see that there it's flat sided really don't know if you can see that or not but it's flat sided and uh you kind of just stick this. I'll show you guys. You gotta just stick this piece. Yeah, there we go. Stick it on there, and then you just turn it. Hold the nozzle still. Focus, and then turn it like that, and then all the paint will be on the flat side. This is not very dirty, but yeah, you just keep doing that until you feel confident enough to put it back in the airbrush. This is not hard to do, it just takes a little practice and really control to not lose the pieces. And then what you want to do is if you buy the kit with that needle, it'll come with these like, little brushes. These are kind of like pipe cleaners, they might like pipe cleaners. Kind of the same concept I guess. And I take some of this cleaner, pour it in there, don't pour it on the bait. Almost did that, that would have been bad. And you just stick it in the barrel which is that piece in which the nozzle screws and just kind of brush it, you know. Trying to get all that old paint off and if you really look in there, there's old paint and uh, it'll just kind of push it out. Just want to spray a little bit. Just to really, just to clean it, you know, a quick overview. Because like I said, I painted with this yesterday and after every paint, I like to actually clean it because I think it really improves your painting. And uh, it, it's a very, very healthy habit to get into if you're airbrushing. And don't forget, when you put your needle back, put it in this way because you don't want that tip getting ever knocked around or beat or just 
you know, ever dented because that will really mess up how you paint and how the airbrush actually functions. I will not be able to show you. I wanted to kind of show you how the needle moves back and forth in there, but I'm not sure if my camera can actually pick up on something that small. Okay, make sure this is tight always. This is what holds the needle from going back and forth. Okay, that's what holds the needle from going back and forth. And uh, it actually, uh, it's called your tensioner knob. No, this is. And that controls how much your needle goes back. Because it, it can stop at a certain point. But that other piece was the piece that, uh, it holds the needle in place while it goes back and forth. And it just gives you that downward motion. But yeah, okay, let's start off with the painting. Stop talking, just paint. I don't put much in the airbrush. And I'm just going to actually hit the back of the bait with this very lightly. You know, a lot of times, you want really... <laughs> with baits like these, you want symmetry. Like, this side's way more faded, you can see, but this side's more white than bare on the top. So since this side is more faded, which is what I want, what you can do as a little trick is just hold the bait like this or with the back towards you, like where you're painting, and just overspray, which is what I'm doing now. And there you go. Pretty good. Okay, that's all the yellow I want on this. So, uh, don't mind me while I clean the airbrush. I've now decided that I'm going to go to a froggy type color with the yellow and the green. This is just an olive green. Love this color so much. Use it on so many baits. If you wonder what I'm doing, I'm just shaking the paint. Because every time you airbrush, you're going to really shake the paint. And by the way, I'm sorry I have to cut away the washing the airbrush because I just simply don't have enough hands to show that. Sorry. But all I'm doing is just taking the brush and you have to have a bucket of water and you just do in the water and the water just sloshes in here and then you take I have this this old paintbrush and you just stir up in there and get just get all the paint out and spray it out you know you just want to make sure it's good you don't have to clean it after every paint just after every paint job so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna actually leave the belly white I'm just gonna spray the sides green this is a very simple paint job which is kind of why I'm making the video on it because uh I don't know, I don't really want a long video right now because that would be very long, like, a long video would be something like painting this. <laughs> I made this, that's the paint job that why I had to clean the airbrush, it's just a big brim glide paint, very big and nice, I don't know, let me know what you guys think, I think it's pretty cool, but enough of that one, on to the green. You always want to spray your hand first, just to get out the old paint. Like after your first color, like I have green, it spray yellow first, and then put the green on top. So you just do that, and it puts paint on your hand, and you just know. And if you're just kind of sissy about putting the paint on your hand, uh, there's nothing I can really tell you. It washes off with water. It's not that harmful. So on to the painting. And what you want to do, like when you're fading in these two colors, so it's not just a dead line, which is what it kind of looks like right now, but uh, what you want to do is just kind of spray at an angle and you're just throwing the paint just kind of back and that's really all you're doing. You're just throwing it back instead of straight, if that makes sense. But I'm just going to continue and show up. Perfect. I did not mean to do this, but 
Can you see like where like the glare is actually shining on this paint? Can anyone guess what that might be? That is moisture. And if there's one nightmare that most bait makers who paint have, it's moisture. And what that is, is just a little bit of water that gets into your paint. And I'm going to show you how you can fix it. After a lot of coats of paint, what you can do is actually take your heat gun. This is one I got from Walmart, and I've had it for years. And you just heat gun the paint from a distance, like about the A4 or whatever. And just don't keep it in one spot because you'll burn the paint. And it's just going to really cure the paint. It's going to dry it. And that's it. That's all you need to do. And continue your paint. Just put more on. Because see, it just does that sometimes. And you've got to account for it. Get that on this channel we don't exactly work with the most high quality airbrushes some of those some of these people have like these $200 airbrushes this I think this was like 40 <laughs> very cheap mm, I'm gonna do the belly button. don't forget like if you carve details <laughs> that face is funny but like see the white on the mouth right there you want to actually, don't forget that, because when you're done with the bait, you'll see like the spot you missed with the paint. <laughs> with this, I like to just angle it to where I cannot see the back. A little bit. There you go. Perfect. Good. Perfect. Not bad. I like it. Kind of looks like a... Uh, I guess you'd call it a squash or like one of those gourd plant things. I don't, I don't really, I don't really know what you'd call that. Very froggy, like I would do say so myself. And now you gotta wash your airbrush again after every color. Here's an old frog bait I've made before. Even got like little bumps on the back and the eyebrows. So dusty. It's a top water walking bait as well. Pretty cool. But now to clean the airbrush. Now what I'm gonna do is actually, this is just my own detail. I just put a little bit of gold in here. And I got this like scraggly mesh stuff. I really like to use it on some baits because it, it gives a very random yet pleasant effect. What I'm going to do is just lay this on a rag, kind of set my fingers over it, just kind of spray a little line down the middle. And like not much, I don't want to put much in. If you look, see that cool little like broken up effect of just a little shiny gold. And you may think now that's not much detail, but it in the end you'll see it underneath everything and it's just going to look pretty good. I like it. Sometimes you put detail and it, it does not show up at all. <laughs> it's just funny because it's not that you did it for nothing, but it just, it, it, you could have done without it, I guess you can say. I can't find the words right now, but you know what I mean. Woo. Beautiful. Almost done. Now for the black. The black of your baits are always like your prettiest stuff because it kind of like everything right now just looks kind of light and you know just kind of the pale. But the black really brings a contrast to your bait, and uh, I think it's one of the most important parts of it. So yeah, we'll just get right to it. Black. I'm just gonna. I like putting black backs on baits. It just looks better to me. So I'm just gonna put a black line. Cool. Oops. 
I like the ending of the tail a little bit. It kind of looks like a mouse. I don't know. I don't really see it as a mouse as much. A lot of people have said this kind of looks like a mouse. Maybe it does. Oh well. Um, now what I'm going to do is look at my great box stencils here. And yep, there it is. Okay. This thing is amazing. If you look at it, it's all kinds of just, you can see my hand through because it's of course clear, but you can see it's all kinds of scraggly, like it, it, it looks like roots to me, it just reminds me of roots. What I'm actually going to do, I don't know if you can see that, yeah you can, I'm going to put this on the bait, just kind of like that, and just spray black, I just want little black dots all over the bait, and it's going to look really cool because trust me, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That looks froggy. Uh, now I'm gonna repeat the other side. I like that. It's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna leave the belly kind of the same thing. But if you look, it looks like all very random and just broken up. And you can actually see the gold underneath. I don't know if you guys can see it, but in person it's there. Trust me, it's there. Now what I like to do is actually add some black around the eyes because what that does is give contrast. So all you do is take your brush, go in there, kind of like that. I'm going to put a little darker. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Now I'm going to do the other one. <laughs> I don't know, I just kind of all came out at once with her. But there you go. That's all I'm going to do. I'm, I'm happy with that. It's, it's a very natural color. I like it. Pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> you thought I was done. No, I just put a little bit of red just to put on the mouth. I like doing that because when actually fishing these baits, it gives the fish a target point. Red. <laughs> Doesn't that look great? The camera picks it up so much better now. Eyes. So for this bait, if you noticed, when you make the bait, there's sockets drilled right there. And common knowledge would tell you that that is for eyes. Now the fun part that a lot of people like is to pick out all the eyes from all this selection. And honestly, it's whatever I'm feeling. I could literally put just a bright pink eye on that, but I'm not because I'm sensible. I guess. <laughs> but uh, these look okay. I might put some of these. These are brown. I like those. Mm. You can never have too many eyes because some baits you make, they're just so hard to choose from. Okay, here, yeah, I'm going to use these. These look good. Well, do they? that look good? I think it will. Yeah, I'm going to go with these. Um, The only thing I do to put these in, sometimes it can be tricky. Sometimes it goes smooth as can be. But... Yeah, of course, for my case, most of the time it's hard because the freaking super glue gets everywhere. Look at that tip of the super glue. That's gnarly. But uh, what we're going to do is you just put a dot in the eye socket. Like that. A little bit. And I just take my tweezers here. Very gently. Just kind of trying to show you guys how to do this at the same time. It's so difficult. Shucks. Yeah, and you just push it down with the tweezers, and there you go. <laughs> A GT bait. 90% done. Now for the other side. Oh, 
It's perfect. Little bait. Looks like a frog, mouse type teardrop. <laughs> I call him the weeping walker because it kind of looks like a teardrop and it walks. I thought it was a cool name. Now I'm just going to spray it with a few coats of lacquer and it's just a clear glossy lacquer and we'll be back whenever that is sprayed. And there we go. Not bad for like a few minutes of painting. This is not bad at all. Yeah, I, I, re I really like that. You know, the gloss coat just really throws it together. Look at that face. Focus. Oh, well. This is just cool. I like this a lot. The, that's all I'm leaving for the belly. The belly is really important for top waters because that's what the fish sees. This is what me and you see and all. Oh, wow, it's pretty, but the fish only sees this. So, which is still a cool color. It's like an olive, like a straight up olive. A long, long olive. But, uh, guys, I think that's it. Uh, other than this, there's, this is just a very simple paint job. Like, you, I have blanks here. I can make videos on just painting simple crankbaits that I have made laying around. And stuff like that. But, guys, if you want to learn to make stuff like this. Or stuff like this. And etc. And stuff like those, which are all pretty ugly in my opinion. But, whatever. If you want to learn to make stuff like that and paint like this, comment below. Keep the channel alive, you know. I think it's pretty cool. So, guys, I, I just made this video just because I felt like painting and uh, haven't made one in a while. So, thank you very much for being a part of this channel. And remember to subscribe and tell all your friends. Love you.